I'm Mark John Sternel, and you are watching my new online streaming series from my best-selling guitar DVD number one, Beginner Basics and Beyond, which is also available in book format as well as a bass guitar DVD. In this first lesson, I'm going to assume that you know absolutely nothing about the guitar. So I'm going to walk you through all the basic fundamental parts and functions of the instrument. Tuning and holding the guitar, a quick lesson showing you how to play in one minute or less, then we're going to learn how to read guitar music using charts, tab, and traditional notation. For a full list of the topics covered in this lesson, click on the full description, and you'll also find a handy timeline which will help you find your place if you take a break. The original DVD is over three hours long, so we broke down this online streaming series into four sections. You're watching lesson one covering the fundamentals and reading guitar music. Lesson two will teach you to play scales, melodies, and chords starting on the first string, then gradually adding strings two, then three. Lesson three will add strings four, five, and six, and end with easy chord changes, strumming, and rhythm patterns. Finally, in lesson four, you will graduate by learning your first five songs on the guitar in various styles such as blues, rock, and country. To learn more about the full-length DVD, just visit www.mjspublications.com. Hello, my name is Mark John Sternel, and you're watching Guitar DVD Number 1, Beginner Basics and Beyond. Throughout this video, you'll learn all you need to know to survive in the world of guitar. By the most simplified definition, a guitar is made of six strings and several frets. The strings are numbered one through six, starting with the thinnest string being number one, through the thickest string being number six. There is also a nut. The nut is sometimes referred to as the zero fret or open. Frets are the bars that run across the fretboard horizontal to the strings. The frets are also numbered starting with the nut being zero or open. Most guitars have more than 20 frets. Guitars have bodies. They also have necks. Acoustic guitars have the same parts as electric guitars, such as the body, neck, and frets. Acoustic guitars have sound holes which produce pitch when the strings are played. When properly tuned, notes on both acoustic guitars and electric guitars are played the same way. Electric guitars will make a quiet sound on their own. Using a guitar cable, plug one end into the input jack of your guitar, and plug the other end into the input jack on your amp. Here we are using an Epiphone Studio 15R which features a high and low input. We will use the high input giving us a louder signal. We are starting out with all of the controls set straight up to 5 o'clock. Many guitar amps feature an overdrive or boost button. When engaged this increases the amount of distortion coming out of the amp. If you lower the gain, or in this case the drive control, the amp's tone will sound cleaner. The more gain you add, the dirtier the tone will get. Gain is also referred to as distortion. The level controls the volume for the overdrive channel. By disengaging the overdrive, the amp switches to the clean channel where level controls the volume. The equalizer allows you to adjust the tone of your amplifier. The Epiphone Studio 15R features three controls for treble or high frequencies, middle frequency control, and bass for the low range frequencies. If you set these straight up, you are running the amp flat, which means you are not giving or taking from the guitar tone. The reverb control allows you to add an echo effect to the guitar.
The Studio 15R also features a loop to connect external effects, as well as an input for connecting stereo headphones. A typical Blues Amp setting would be drive to number 4, treble just past the 5 marker, middle almost to 6, and bass down to 4. Switch to the clean channel and the blues settings will work well for country music. For a common rock guitar tone, engage overdrive and set drive to 6 or 7, treble just past the number 7 marker, mid to 6, and bass to 7. For an extreme heavy metal guitar setting, turn the drive or gain all the way up. The clean channel is not used. For the EQ, set treble between 8 and 10. In metal, it is typical to cut the mids from halfway down to zero for an extreme. And turn the bass up between 8 and 10. Now that your electric guitar is plugged into an amplifier, the volume and tone knobs help shape the sound of the instrument. The pickups are what capture the signal from the guitar and send them to the amplifier. This guitar is an Epiphone Les Paul Standard. It features a solid mahogany body, flame maple top, and two humbucker pickups, the neck and the bridge pickup, giving this guitar great sound and massive sustain. To change pickups, this guitar features a three-way toggle switch. In the up position, the neck pickup is engaged. In the center position, the neck and bridge pickup are engaged. And in the down position, the bridge pickup is on. You might use the neck pickup for playing chords and rhythm guitar. The middle will add some brightness to the chords or fills. And the bridge pickup is often used for leads. The bridge of the guitar is opposite the nut. If you play a note, in this case I'll play the first string, the string will vibrate causing sound between the bridge and the nut. When you hold a fret, you are shortening the length of the string and the sound now vibrates between the bridge and the fret you are holding. As you move your finger up the neck, the length of the vibrating string becomes shorter causing pitch to increase to higher notes. Some guitars, like this Epiphone Futura Prophecy FX, feature a tremolo bridge or a whammy bar, which allows you to change the pitch of any note you're playing. Simply play a note, then dip the bar. You can apply subtle tremolo, fast tremolo, or go for a long dive. To learn more about using the tremolo bridge, we highly recommend Easy Whammy Bar Guitar DVD. The easiest way to keep your guitar in tune is to use an electric tuner. The tuner that I am using in this video is an Epiphone guitar and bass guitar tuner. It has a microphone that picks up the pitch of an acoustic instrument or a plug for electric instruments. To tune your instrument, pick an open string. 
If the display lights up to the left of center, that means your string is too loose and you need to tighten the tuning peg. If the display lights up to the right, it means your string is too tight and you need to loosen the peg until the meter lines up in the center and you're in tune. This tuner even features a seventh string option for seven string guitars and also features a bass guitar option with the bottom set of controls. Playing in tune is very important for beginner guitarists. You want to develop a sense of pitch as soon as possible. So if you don't already have one, I highly recommend that you get an electric tuner. In case you don't have a tuner, tune to my guitar. Here is the first string, E. Second string, B. Third string, G. Fourth string, D. Fifth string, A. And sixth string, the low E. You can also learn to tune a guitar by ear. For example, if your sixth string is in tune, you can use the fifth fret to tune the fifth string open. Play the sixth string fifth fret, then play the fifth string open, compare the two notes, and adjust the pitch of the fifth string to match that of the sixth string fifth fret by tightening or loosening the tuning peg. You can apply this to the 5th string, 5th fret, to tune the 4th string. When the 4th string is in tune, you could use the 4th string, 5th fret, to tune the 3rd string open. On the 3rd string, hold the 4th fret to tune the 2nd string open. And when your 2nd string is in tune, play the 2nd string, 5th fret, to tune the 1st string open. When sitting, you can rest your guitar on your lap. While certain styles of music prefer one leg to the other, in popular culture, it has become acceptable to use either one. If you put your guitar on the same side as your picking hand, you'll be able to reach the open position easier. If you move it to the same side as your playing hand, this will put the guitar in a comfortable position for you to reach the higher frets. However, playing the open position becomes more of a stretch. Experiment with both and do what is more comfortable for you. You can also learn to play standing up by using a guitar strap to hold your guitar at your desired length. If you are just starting out, I recommend that you adjust the strap so the guitar is near the same position whether you're sitting or standing. You may find that picking becomes difficult if your strap is too long or too short. To correct this, adjust the length of the strap to your liking. For this section, I'll be playing an Epiphone Wilshire, which is a reissue of the 1962 model. The Wilshire features a neck that is set into the body of the guitar. Music is made on the guitar by simply picking a string. You can pick a string open without touching any frets or strings, or you can place one of your fingers directly behind a fret and pick that string. If the fretted note is dull or muted, check for these problems. First, is your finger directly above the fret wire? If so, move it back directly behind the fret, apply pressure, and pick the string. 
Second is your finger too far back away from the fret wire. This requires a lot of unnecessary pressure. To correct this, slide your finger closer to the fret so it is directly behind it, apply pressure, and pick the string. That's all there is to it. If you could play this note, consider yourself a brand new guitarist. Here is your first finger placement exercise. Place your first or index finger directly behind the first fret and pick the first string. Place your second or middle finger in the second fret position and pick. Use your third or ring finger to play the third fret. Then the fourth or pinky finger to play the fourth fret. For this whole exercise, my thumb is placed behind the middle finger, or second fret, in the center of the back of the neck. If you have smaller hands, you can move them up the fretboard where the frets are closer together. On the first string, move your index finger up to the ninth fret, then play the same finger placement exercise. Forward. backward, and even on other strings. Hello again, I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far. As I previously mentioned, this lesson is derived from my best-selling guitar DVD number one, Beginner Basics and Beyond. So if you'd rather watch this lesson on your Blu-ray player or DVD player, just pick up a copy. They're available in stores and online, or you could order it directly from my company website, mjspublications.com. The DVD is over three hours long and priced at only $14.95. This video uses chord charts, traditional music notation, and tablature, also known as tab. This is a note chart. Each vertical line represents a guitar string. Each horizontal line represents a fret. Dots are placed on the note chart to show you which strings and frets to hold in order to play scales or chords. In some cases, like this example, hollow dots represent an open string. This note chart shows three dots on the first string. The dots represent the notes to play on the fretboard. To play the notes below, simply pick the first string open, then the first fret, then the third fret. You can also play it descending by picking the first string third fret, then first fret, then open. Here we are using more than one string. To play the notes on this chart, pick the second string open, first fret, third fret, then switch to the first string open, then the first fret, then the third fret. You can also play this descending by starting with the first string third fret, then first fret, and open, then play the second string notes, third, first, then open. When notes are intended to be played on higher frets, the fret number is listed to the left or right of the chart. The previous exercise did not use fret numbers because the notes were near the open position or within range of the nut. In this exercise, the number 7 tells us that the lowest fret we use is the 7th fret. To play this section, start with the 1st string 7th fret, followed by the 8th fret, then the 10th fret. Or to play it descending, start with the 1st string 10th, then 8th, then 7th fret. This is a chord chart. It looks identical to a note chart, however, it is played differently. Notice there is only one note on each string, where on the note charts there were three notes. Chord charts show you groups of notes that can be played or strummed together. 
Dots are placed on the chord chart to show you which strings and frets to hold to play a chord. Sometimes numbers are placed under the chord chart to show you which fingers to use for each note. This chord chart shows three X's and three O's. The X's mean you do not play the strings they line up with. The O's represent open notes for the string they line up with. To play the chord below, simply strum or pick strings three, two, and one so that they ring out at the same time. This next chart adds a fretted note. The new note would be held using your first finger on the third string behind the first fret. To play the chord, strum or pick strings three, two, and one so they ring out at the same time. Here we are using all strings. The sixth or lowest string is open. The fifth string note is held down with your second finger. Fourth string note is held down with your third finger. The third string note is held down with your first finger. The second and first strings are open. Strummer pick all six strings so they ring out at the same time. It is often necessary to hold down two or more strings with one finger. This technique is called barring. Chords using this technique are called bar chords. If you are having trouble with this chord, move on for now. In a few short sections, your fingers will be strong enough to play all of these chords. Just like the numbered frets for note charts, when chords are intended to be played on higher frets, the fret number is listed next to the chord chart. The previous exercise did not use fret numbers because the chords were all in the open position or within range of the nut. This exercise has us playing a bar chord on the fifth fret of the first, second, and third strings. Strings four, five, and six are silent. Tab is the easiest way to learn to read guitar music. The top line always represents the first string of your guitar. The second line represents the second string and on through the sixth string. And numbers represent the frets that you play. So if a number one is written on the top line of the tab staff, you would play the first fret on the first string. If a 1 is written followed by a 2, you would play the first fret on the first string followed by the second fret on the first string. You can also play two or more notes together. On the tab, we see the first string is open and the second string calls for the first fret. Place your index finger on the second string first fret and position it so the bottom of your finger is not touching the first string. Then pick both the second and first strings together. You'll be able to use this video even if you do not learn to read traditional notation. However, we have included an introduction in this section. Music is traditionally written on a staff. A staff consists of five lines and four spaces which represent the different notes of the musical scale. The notes represented on the staff come from our musical alphabet. They are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. After the G note, the alphabet starts over with A. This also works in reverse if you are playing or writing the notes backwards. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, and so on. Guitar music is written on the treble clef. Whenever you see this symbol, the music can be played on a guitar. The notes of the treble clef start with E on the very bottom line. The space above E represents an F note. The line above F represents a G. Notes can extend above and below the staff by the use of ledger lines. There are also different versions of most notes called accidentals. Accidentals consist of sharps or flats. To make a note sharp is to raise it one fret on the guitar. To make a note flat is to lower it one fret on the guitar.
One way of writing sharps or flats on the staff is to place the symbol before the note you want to change. Another way of writing sharps or flats is to use a key signature. Simply put, a key signature is a group of sharps or flats at the very beginning of a staff line. The sharp or flat note in the key signature indicates that all notes of the same name will be altered throughout the piece of music. If the key signature has a sharp symbol on an F, you are to play F sharp in place of F for the remainder of the piece of music unless otherwise indicated by another accidental symbol. When a sharp or flat note needs to be changed back to its original non-accidental state, a natural symbol is used. Most guitar music uses both tablature and staff notation, which allows you to choose which method of reading you would like to use. Some guitar music uses all three methods. In this example, you can choose between the note chart, standard notation, and tab. All three methods indicate the same chord. Bar lines are the vertical lines that divide tablature and staff music into sections. The measure is the space between bar lines. Music is the combination of time and sound. By changing the speed at which a note or group of notes is played, or the length the note is held, you are controlling the timing. Each measure uses an equal set of beats. The amount of beats is determined by the time signature. For example, in 4-4 timing, each measure equals 4 beats. In 3-4 timing, each measure will equal 3 beats. In 2-4 timing, each measure will equal 2 beats. The most popular time signature is 4-4 timing. 4-4 timing is also called common time and is sometimes identified with a letter C in the time signature. Another way to identify 4-4 timing or common time is to leave the time signature blank. The tempo of a song determines how fast or how slow each measure is counted. For example, 40 BPM means you would count 40 beats per minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. 80 BPM means you would count 80 beats per minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 160 BPM means you would count 160 beats per minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are many different timing notes. For starters, the whole note equals 4 beats, or one whole measure in 4-4 four, four timing. The half note equals 2 beats. The quarter note equals 1 beat. The importance of timing cannot be stressed enough. Music is the study of time and sound. Anyone can make noise by hitting random notes on an instrument. A note or a group of notes must be structured with timing to become music. For this reason, every exercise on this video will be played with a slow and a fast tempo. This section includes a comprehensive look at the fundamentals of the guitar. I am of strong belief that musicians should know their instruments and you as a guitarist should know your guitar. The musical alphabet consists of 12 notes. A, A sharp and B flat, B, C, C sharp and D flat, D, D sharp and E flat, E, F, F sharp and G flat, G, G sharp and A flat, and A again. Notice that the 2nd, 5th, 7th, 10th, and 12th notes have two different names. For example, the second note can be an A sharp or a B flat. It is the same note, but it has two different names. The notes A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are called basic or natural notes. The notes A sharp and B flat, 
C sharp and D flat, D sharp and E flat, F sharp, G flat, and G sharp and A flat are called accidentals. Each of the six strings of the guitar have been assigned a specific note. The sixth string, which is the top and heaviest string, is an E note. It is called the low E string. When this string is played open, no frets, no fingers, it will produce an E pitch. Each fret after that will bring you to the next note in the musical alphabet. If you play the sixth string first fret, it will produce an F note. The second fret will produce an F sharp or G flat note. Third fret will produce a G note. Next, a G sharp or A flat note. Then A. The sixth fret will be an A sharp or B flat. The seventh fret is B. The eighth, C and on through the alphabet as you travel up the frets. Once you reach the 12th fret, the musical alphabet will repeat itself starting with E. The fifth string open is A. The fourth string is a D note. The third string is a G. Second is the B string. And the first string is the high E string. Altogether, starting with the sixth string, the open notes are E, A, D, G, B, and E. For your reference, a fretboard note chart has been included in the bonus section of this video. Positioning of your hands is very important when playing the guitar. Pay close attention to this section and get in the habit of keeping your fingers and hands in the proper positions at all times. Hold your pick between your thumb and index finger. The tip of the pick should be pointing in the direction of your index finger. Always alternate your picking strokes. Down, up, down, up. Bend your wrist or your elbow when you're picking. Avoid any movement of your thumb or index finger. Your other three fingers should be rolled into your palm or stretched out and braced against the body of your guitar below the first string. You can also use these fingers to mute the strings you are not playing and prevent any unwanted notes from ringing out. If you are a beginner guitarist or if this is a new technique for you, take some time to practice it. The following exercises will help you develop a good picking technique. For this first exercise, we will play the first string and let it ring out for four beats. One, two, three, four. Then move to the second string for four beats. One, two, three, four, and keep playing through all six strings. When we get to the sixth string, we will turn the exercise around and work back to the first string. Let's start out with a very slow tempo of 40 beats per minute, or 40 BPM. Then we'll double the speed and play it at 80 BPM.
This next exercise has us play each string on the one and three count. Starting on the first string, pick down on one and hold for two, pick up on three and hold for four. Move to the second string, one, two, three, four, then through all six strings and back. Here's the exercise with a slow and fast tempo. For this next exercise, we will pick a note for each beat. First string, one, two, three, four, move to the second string, and be sure to alternate your picking strokes. Down, up, down, up. To the third string, one, two, three, four, and on to the sixth string and back. Let's play it with the tempo. Thank you. 
Get in the habit of positioning the fingers of your playing hand one fret apart each. On the sixth string, press down on the first fret with your first finger, second fret, second finger, third fret, third finger, and fourth fret, fourth finger. When you are not playing a note, your finger should remain in this position one half inch above the strings. This positioning should be used anywhere on the fretboard. So if you move your hand up the neck, your fingers will stay one fret apart each. Always keep your thumb in contact with the neck, even when you are not playing any notes. The best position for beginner players is to keep your thumb behind your middle finger in the center of the neck. Many guitarists allow their thumb to hang over the top edge of the guitar. There are some techniques that require this positioning, but overall it will slow you down when you are starting out. I recommend that you learn your first few songs with your thumb in back of the neck, which will help you build finger strength. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first installment of Guitar Number no. 1, Beginner Basics and Beyond. In Lesson 2, we will start playing on the first string, then add second string notes, as well as melodies and harmonies, progressing to the third string, where you'll be playing full chords, melodies, and scales on all three strings.